Let me ask you a question. Are you growing as a Christian? Welcome to Sunday School Made Simple. Each week, we use UMI's Precepts Digital to make Sunday School simple with an easy to understand format. The text for you students of the Word and teaching tips for those of you who teach. You can find more in-depth study, resources, and join our community at preceptsdigital.com. Are you ready to begin? Let's pray. Father, I pray that we not just be baby Christians all our lives, but that we would really grow up in you, that we would become mature and exemplary citizens of the kingdom that walk in righteousness for your name's sake, for your grace and for your glory and for the expansion of your kingdom. God, let us add that patience, that understanding, that endurance, all those things that are needed to have us grow up into the full stature of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you know, this whole topic of maturity is huge. You can meet some saints sometimes and they've been walking with the Lord for a long time and you wonder, well, what's going on here? And then you meet others that just came into the faith and they've studied the word and they're growing and flourishing in the things of God. But God has called us all to maturity. And I've been walking with the Lord for quite some time now. And I've got to tell you that I can say I'm not what I used to be. I have grown in God and continue to grow. And I realize I'll never stop growing until I see him. That is the basis and process for transformation. We're all called to look like him. And yes, it's a process. And yes, it takes time. But let's be focused on growing in the things of God and not being stagnant. This is an important lesson. The Apostle Peter wrote two letters to encourage believers to remain faithful and to continue to grow in Christ in the midst of a sinful world. We will discuss his encouragement toward spiritual growth found in his second letter today. We'll look into the mirror of God's Word by discussing what's important to know, feel, and do from our lesson today. Let's read from our first set of verses from our scripture lesson in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 through 4 in the New Living Translation. It says, This letter is from Simon Peter, a slave and apostle of Jesus Christ. I'm writing to you who share the same precious faith we have. This faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ, our God and Savior. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. By His divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know Him, the one who called us to Himself by means of His marvelous glory and excellence. And because of His glory and excellence, He's given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share His divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. The key point is, remember the promises. First, let's examine our background and context so we can better understand today's lesson. Second Peter is a letter whose purpose is primarily to refute false teachers. In order to refute falsehood, however, one must robustly affirm the truth, which Peter is careful to do. This letter also has one of the most direct affirmations of the deity of Christ, where the author refers to the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. This core Christian belief colors the rest of the book, reminding us that the truth of the gospel is a truth of divine weight and worth. It also reminds us that the one who called us, the one who works in us, and the one who died for us is divine. The big picture is this. We grow spiritually because of our relationship with God. Here is perhaps the most profound picture of redemption found in the scriptures. After the introductory two verses, the author turns the eyes and ears of the believer to the power of God, which is the source of all gifts, power, and promises. But verse 4 introduces an idea that has been controversial. 
The goal of salvation, according to the author, is that we might be partakers of the divine nature. We must not understand this to mean that we literally become the creator of the universe. There's a distinction between the creator and the creature. The reality that Peter highlights is that the relationship to which God has called us brings us closer to him than anything we could ever imagine. As Paul describes it, we'll be made like Jesus Christ, becoming the children of God who display his glory. We are made holy because of God's holiness. We're filled with the power of his promised Holy Spirit, which is the literal presence of God in our lives. Faith in Christ unites us to God in ways that we can only fathom, and it is in awe of that reality that we can live out the Christian life, not to earn God's favor, but as a result of our living in His grace. The next set of verses for this lesson are from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5-11. through 11. And it says, In view of all of this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence, and moral excellence with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with patient endurance, and patient endurance with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they've been cleansed from their old sins. So, dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you'll never fall away. Then, God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The key point is, remember the virtues. Peter explains key attributes or virtues to pursue in responding to God's call. These virtues are maturity markers for Christians and they begin with faith. Through faith, we're in relationship with God through Jesus Christ and are born again. But our Christian growth doesn't stop there. Peter gives a list to emphasize the process of building one thing on top of another. We must add to our faith moral excellence or virtue, as the King James Version says. That means we must be faithful and we must also pursue ethical living. On top of that, add knowledge of Christ and add to knowledge self-control, which is making good decisions. And then to self-control, add patient endurance, which means not giving up when things get difficult. To patient endurance, add godliness, which means seeing God in good times as well as in bad times. And to godliness, brotherly affection. Be nice to people, not just those in the faith. Add to brotherly affection, love. If we mature in this way, we'll also demonstrate what Christ is like. If we don't grow, it's because we can't see. We're spiritually blind and we have amnesia. We forget that we've been cleansed and forgiven. But if we make the effort to grow by reading God's word through prayer, fellowship with other believers and obeying God, we're preparing ourselves for eternal life in Christ's kingdom. The final set of verses in this lesson are found in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 12 through 15. And it says, Therefore, I will always remind you about these things, even though you already know them and are standing firm in the truth you've been taught. And it's only right that I should keep on reminding you as long as I live. For our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me that I must soon leave this earthly life, so I'll work hard to make sure you always remember these things after I'm gone. The key point is, remember Peter. Peter affirms and encourages the church to whom he's writing. He reminds them of these important doctrines and disciplines before he dies. Apostle Peter reveals his sobering reality that he knows he will soon die for the faith. Peter had lived through the deaths of the first Christian martyrs. 
He knew that his time was likely coming soon as Roman authority became more violent and unrest in Judea grew more pronounced. Indeed, Peter was martyred in Rome probably shortly after writing this letter. But the church continued to grow and spread the gospel throughout the Roman Empire after his death. What's important to feel? We should feel thankful for those who have gone before us and challenged us to grow in our faith. God has given us salvation through Jesus Christ. We should be thankful for that. We have the example of the biblical characters to learn from. We have the example of elders in our families and communities. We have God's Word. As we grow in the knowledge of Christ, we will display the characteristics of a mature believer. Now, what should we do in response to today's lesson? We should mature as believers. It doesn't get any more simple than that. We should be growing in the knowledge of Christ consistently. We're being transformed so we can live a life that brings God glory. And there are things we must do. God isn't going to do them for us, and He isn't going to make us feel like doing what we need to do. The Holy Spirit empowers us to live holy lives. Are we going to be intentional about applying the lessons of this quarter? To seek God, trust God, examine ourselves, keep the faith and grow in our faith? I'll answer for you. Yes! Well, that's our scripture made simple. Do you remember our key points? Remember the promises, remember the virtues, and remember Peter. Well, it's been my honor to share with you today. For additional resources that will help you as you study or teach, I invite you to subscribe to PreceptsDigital.com. You'll find my lesson plan, special teaching tips, the Word Made Simple, and more. In addition, you'll connect with a community of believers who are growing as they study God's Word together. I'm looking forward to seeing you at PreceptDigital.com. Now let's close the lesson with our Keep in Mind verse from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4 in the New Living Translation. And because of His glory and excellence, He has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share His divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Child of God, remember the Lord's promises and keep the faith. Have a great week.